Happy New Year, Aquarius. We're about to come into your season. Yay. Happy 2018. We are officially in another solar year. This is awesome. And this year, oh, before I get into all of that, I am the Ivy Phoenix. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be, you know, back providing videos for you all. I just have like this renewed feeling about this year. Um, so hello again to my previous subscribers and welcome to my new subscribers. Um, I'm really feeling 2018. I really am. This is another, you know, monumental year. Uh, 2017 was all about transformations, self-worth, a lot of internal work, um, the ending of Saturn in Sagittarius. And so now we have Saturn and Capricorn, of course, but 2018 breaks out into two or 11, actually. So it's going to be another parallel year. And we have like clear cut evidence of that because January 1st produces a full super moon in Cancer. The next full moon we're actually going to get is going to be on, get this, December 22nd of 2018 in Cancer. And just January alone, um, I've really loved everybody's readings. There is still going to be some work for some signs in case you are interested in cross-watching. But uh, January alone has a parallel when it comes to moons and supermoons at that. And it's going to be a lunar eclipse in Leo during the Aquarius season. And that is that actually has to do with the Leo Aquarius um, eclipse series that we have going on that started in February of 2017 that will go until 2019. So um, in some of the videos, and I will put disclaimers into the comments after I get all of these done. I had mentioned that the lunar eclipse was going to be in Aquarius, which is technically true. You know, it is Aquarius season, but it's actually going to be um, within Leo, which actually relates back to the... Uh, solar eclipse that happened in August on the 21st. So all of these different dualities are popping up all over the place. I tell you, a lot of signs have also had um, cards that represented dualities. So I feel like a lot of people are still doing some inner work. I think that Saturn and Sagittarius is still producing one last lesson because now that it's back home in Capricorn and Saturn is never going to ease up on teaching things that need to be learned. However, it wants to start producing the roots. It wants to start giving out results. It wants to start, you know, solidifying all of these things that you want. So... You know, are you going to make it harder on yourself or are you not? Now, I did my spread just a tad bit differently. I'm actually really excited about it. Um, I'm an intuitive reader. I pull jumpers from my cards uh, or from my decks that I use. So that means, you know, they clearly come out, they flip over, or they just don't want to go back into the deck. That's how I read. That's what I'm comfortable with. It lets me know that my spirit guides are with me um, and that it let me know, too, how powerful the energy is because sometimes so those cards just fly. <laughs> Uh, also, too, and this is more, you know, of a recap for um, my new followers, but just everyone in general. Um, also, too, when it comes to reversals, I always clean up my deck so that everything is upright. So when it comes out in reverse, it's something that you definitely need to hear. OK, um, so this set up, I broke it out by weeks for the month of January. Now, granted, we. Um, have four full weeks, but I broke it out into five, and I've already pulled the first four. Um, you know, shuffled, cut the deck, meditated, all of that jazz. Um, but I wanted to still appease and accommodate, you know, my subscribers that like shuffling on camera. So week five, I will, you know, pull those cards and any clarifying cards that are needed for all the weeks. I do apologize in advance for my voice being hoarse. Um, this video, like I said, is in conjunction with the uh, full supermoon and cancer video. So please definitely, or maybe I haven't said that yet. But please go watch that. The link is going to be down below in the description box as well so you can reference it. I talk through the energy of the full moon and the planetary shifts that are going to be happening throughout the month. Um, <clears throat> Kind of. I touched on the ones that really had to do with the, the full moon right now. Um, 
and what relates to the season of Capricorn, <clears throat> excuse me, and also, you know, uh, yeah, basically the moon cycles. And then towards the latter part, I pulled uh, energy cards for all 12 signs. So please feel free to go ahead and fast forward to the Aquarius section because I want to make sure that, that flows in with the reading here. But um, just to give a little bit of a recap for you that have already gone to or have already watched that. So Aquarius, the card that you had out was adjacent possibilities. And I had mentioned while I was shuffling the cards for for that portion that there may be some type of promotion coming in, um, but I'm actually really feeling this, this, is, this is more about you having to deal with some relationships that just need to be debted. Um, I think that there are some control issues that Aquariuses are going to be dealing with during this month. And I also feel like there is, you know, definitely some love possibilities here, but it's really going to be about, um, I'm feeling the warmth from the sun. I'm sorry, but it's really going to be like this, this balancing that you need to do. Okay. So let's get started. Week one, eight of wands. I definitely feel like there is something that you need to let go of with this full moon. This full moon has to do with instant gratification. It also has to do with the divine feminine. That's kind of what inspired my look. I feel like so natural, so beautiful, you know, easy going, all of that. Um, yeah. And I love the moon. Um, I do believe, you know, that that is, that's my relative, um, astral body in addition to, you know, Venus just from my sign placements, but I love La Luna. That's what I call her. That's my name for her. And she rules over cancer. But when I'm looking at this card, I'm just feeling like there's this huge need to release. Like, and not in a forceful way either. I mean, you're giving whatever, you know, this drama was, this fresh breath of air. Like, you're just, you're cool. You're cool. You could be dealing with the fire sign just because it's um, from the wands uh, suit. But um, let's clarify a little bit, shall we? <clears throat> Week one for Aquarius. If you have outgrown someone during the first week of January, you may be, you know, finally just saying bye bye. Like, you know, um, we we've done enough. We've done enough. We we've had enough. Um, what? Cards are hard right now. Um, sorry. Uh, still kind of a, a new deck. I haven't used it much except for in the last few days um but yeah you've done enough eight of wands you know like you you've had to be on guard and battling things for a minute now and you're just identifying you know there are some people who are just not meant to go where you're going which is crazy because look at that six of air you know time to time to keep it moving i just need to stretch these out a little bit All right, so week one, please clarify this Eight of Wands for Aquarius, January 2018. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, there we go. Oh, nope, okay. I thought that one was going to flip. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Queen of Fire. Definitely could be dealing with a fire sign. Or Aquarius, you have fire in your chart. Or Aquarius, you may be, uh, you know, taking on these qualities. Again, just by saying like, no, no, I'm passionate about some things right now. I have my eye on the prize and you just can't come with me anymore. You know, um, if you work with somebody and maybe that partnership needs to be severed, 
Um, you may be trying to decipher like, okay, so who do you need to be looking for? Write out, um, you know, maybe a job description that may show you six of water. So potentially this is somebody from the past or somebody that you've known for a while, maybe since childhood. Or again, if this is you, you know, um, having some maybe bad behavior that you need to let go of, then this is signifying that there are those childhood issues you just finally need to to really get to the bottom of. So apply, um, you know, these different scenarios, whether it's for work, whether it's for love, it could be for both. So duality parallels, it could be happening in both of those areas of your life. It could be just from a personal standpoint where it's time for you to grow. But in order for you to do that, you have to release some things. OK. Week two, you guys got three cards, actually. So I think by doing that, releasing whatever, um, you know, area of your life that has to deal with, you're going to definitely feel, you know, wonderful about it. I also feel that this may relate to the solar eclipse. So if anything possibly started taking place back in August, you know, a lot of those feelings or maybe, you know, confirmation that you were doing the right thing is going to be appearing now. Now, granted, the lunar eclipse is not going to be until the end of January, but at least, you know, you're going to be like those lessons I had to learn, those things that I had to do. I finally decided to do them and I feel great. You could also be dealing with the Leo. Again, walking away, you know that you did the right thing, or maybe this is the week that you actually decide to make those moves. Now, I feel like the release is there. You know, first you have to be mentally in the place to do it, emotionally in the place to do it. This may be you actually taking that step, or this could just be, that could have been the mental release. This could be the emotional release. Nine of Swords. I feel that it's going to cause, you know, some disappointment, though. This it's a, and, you know, it this person could have been important to you. I want to clarify the Nine of Swords. This person could have been important to you. So it definitely could hurt, you know, like leaving something behind that you had, you know, a, that had a purpose for you in some type of capacity. You know, it's grieving, it's grieving. So maybe, you know, there's been a loss that you haven't been able to grieve just yet with, but you're going to be okay, Aquarius. It's going to take some time. It may not be then, but you're going to feel, you know, again, you still have an element of abundance. You're still able to uh, birth new things with or without this person. Happiness, satisfaction. Choosing to walk away and elevate yourself. You know, there's this sense of enlightenment. Oh, I'm sorry. There's this sense of enlightenment. I'm trying to go the right direction here. There we go. But these nines and these eights. So you are really coming to the end of some type of cycle. I want to pull one more card, though, for this Nine of Swords. By letting go of the mental stress, because I feel like with Aquarius, um, you know, emotions aren't always on the forefront. You more so let things um This landed in reverse. So I feel like you you more so keep things, you keep playing it over in your head, and that's where your emotions primarily lie. That's not to say that you don't feel, but you feel it here first. You feel it in your mind first because you try to understand the why. The why. But you're going to be okay. Eight of Earth in reverse, Eight of Pentacles in reverse. So even though you may be okay, you have to take a step back of focusing on it. 
Don't focus on this heart ache. You guys have a lot of eights and nines. You're really, you're really almost there. So um, I feel like, you know, spirit was giving you this message, you know, during week two because of what's happening during week three. You're trying to hold on to something. I feel like this is more mentally, though. Perhaps from a work perspective, the situation could have messed with your pockets a little bit within, you know, since the the solar eclipse, you may have seen some shifts. Maybe some shifts in some partnerships that you thought were um, were meant, but they they just need to change now. You got to where you were supposed to go with them, and now it's time to move to another level, or you want to move to another level, or they want to move to another level. But instead of focusing on the mental stress of it, you're now trying to take matters into your own hands and control it. Please clarify this four of pentacles, week three for Aquarius, January, January. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jeez, oh, thank you. Four of pentacles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to have some type of enlightenment on the issue. I think that something is going to present itself um, to let you know, like, you can't. This isn't going to get you anywhere. Taking taking matters into your own hands isn't going to get you where. It's out of your control. You can't control the other party, however they fit into this, whether it's love, whether it's work. You can only control yourself. So maybe this is, if, when it comes to yourself, maybe this is a lesson that you are learning now, is that this gives you nothing. You can manipulate and manipulate however you want to the situation. This also reminds me of the Capricorn reading a little bit where there were some control concerns. And maybe this is what is popping up um, because it is going to be the Capricorn new moon. So you could be taking on some of that energy. You could be dealing with the Capricorn. Um, maybe this is going to be the energy shift from Capricorn to the Aquarius season during the middle of the month. But you're going to realize that it does you no good. It leaves you here. You put in all of this work, all of that work to try and keep this in your power, but you can't. You end up back here. And I think you're going to finally get it because, haha, what else do we have? We have the eight of water again, walking away, leaving it behind, flipping yourself outside of this mindset. And you have, you know, you have things that you've worked for that are going to be coming with you. You do. You do. I feel like you may want more, though. But Aquarius, you need to take a step back. This is going to definitely be a stage of your life where you are learning that everything doesn't always work out and it's okay, but because it doesn't, doesn't mean that something better is not coming up for you, that you still won't have, you know, the same opportunities or the same chances to go after what you want. Again, you had adjacent possibilities because one door closes or another door opens. That doesn't mean you can't walk through another one or that one won't be on the other side. It's a journey. It's a process. Things don't just stop. Things don't just stop. Things don't just stop. Week four, Queen of Cups. So perhaps by determining, you know, um, and understanding what you need to do to, you know, kill off this bad behavior, you have some beautiful love or something just beautiful coming in. This could also be for work. And I mean, look at these turtles, sea turtles, helping this queen of cups walk across the water. Stability. You have, you have a team that can, you know, keep you elevated. But it's like you she has this sense of I don't need to hold on to things. I can release it. I can let it go. Queen of Cups week four, please. Queen of Cups week four, please clarify for Aquarius. Three of 
three of air. Perhaps this, if this was a love situation, you know, by embodying this queen of cups, you are finally going to be able to heal that heartache. If this is from a work situation, understanding that you have people on your team that do still support you, that still want to be there for you so you can heal from the disappointment. If this is you understanding that by you uh, possibly getting a little bit more in touch with your emotions and not always having things, you know, built up in your mind, you can stop exhibiting this type of behavior or stop exhibiting that, you know, everything that goes wrong is meant to put you in this place. Interesting, the birds around her have crowns, have crowns, they have crowns, they're on your level, but you know, and you have, and potentially these could have been the people that, you know, disappointed you, where maybe you put them on some type of pedestal, but it's just now time to, to, to know what you're capable of, Aquarius. Week five, week five for Aquarius, please. Jan oh, wow, January. <laughs> you got four. So this is definitely, um, I feel, that, and it definitely could be both. You definitely could be experiencing both this month, um, love and work. Page of Wands, some mess, some passionate message. Somebody is really trying to get your attention. You could be trying to get somebody's attention. You could be delivering this type of message. Maybe, again, you know, if this, this was love that you were dealing with during week four, this person, a water sign perhaps. I mean, you do have a lot of water. Earth, fire, air. So there's all elements here. Um, but if this was somebody coming in with a love offer for you, you know, I definitely feel like, you know, they're going to be delivering also a passionate, passionate message to you. Or maybe you could be opening yourself up to receiving the love that they're offering. So you are delivering a passionate message to them to let them know, like, OK, I'm in it. And I say that because there's King of Cups here. So potentially, you know, this is going to be a wonderful Ace of Pentacles, new beginning, stable beginning of a relationship with this King and Queens here. And again, do not get mixed up into the gender of the cards. The energy can flow for whoever. But, you know, maybe this is somebody that you work with because I'm just seeing, you know, the, the sea turtle uh, relevance here. And if you are possibly, you know, still in the realms of letting some things go, I definitely feel that you're going to communicate that clearly <laughs> with this King of Swords. I'm glad that it didn't come out in the reverse because it means he probably didn't do it in the most tactful way. The King of Swords, the Queen of Swords upside down are people you don't want to mess with because they don't care about you, how you're going to feel. They don't care how the message is going to come out. They don't care about any of that. They just care that you understand like psh, you're gone. But I think you you contemplated it for a while. You know, it was building up and now you just finally communicated clearly. And maybe if it was walking away from somebody, you really do let them know, like, I'm on another level. I'm on another level. I have somebody that's passionate about me. I'm passionate about them. Maybe we can really give this a go. I want to clarify the Page of Wands and the King of Swords. So Page of Wands for week five, Aquarius, please. Eight of Fire, Page of Wands, equally nine. That's what I'm feeling more so with this, so that you understand the battles that you have had to fight 
for either, you know, work opportunities, love opportunities, whatever it is, finally being able to let the grief go, perhaps, you know, and you, you feel like warm about it, happy about it. It may still be difficult, but you know, it's for, it's, it's for, it's for your betterment. It's for your betterment. It's for you to be in a better place. I actually want to pull one more card. One more card for this page of wands, please. Aquarius, week five, January. Thank you. Page of Earth. So whoever this is, if it's not you, I definitely foresee that you're going to have some messages and not only passion, but stability. So maybe this is that, you know, new opportunity, that new job, that promotion um, that you get a message about, or it's just from, you know, this person who really has their eye on you, who really sees this. Actually, I want to do it like this. Who sees this? The king and the queen are looking in, looking at each other with this, you know, new beginning smack dab in the middle. King of Swords, please clarify why this King of Swords is here during the last week for Aquarius. King of Swords, King of Swords. And again, um, general read, so may not apply to everyone. Check sun, moon, rising, um, Venus signs for more clarity and more in-depth picture. Oh, there we go. Higher font. Perhaps the, you know, thing that you need to clarify for whether it's love, whether it's work, is that you want something that is truly going to fit in line with your desires. With your desires. Tradition. You could be a Taurus. For some of you or some fellow earth sign that you may have been dealing with. I also feel like maybe you've been contemplating, um, communicating. I'm still kind of getting a little bit of a loving element from this King of Swords. That's not always associated with this card. But I feel it because of, you know, the Hierophant being here, this tradition. So maybe you're understanding, like, maybe I've been acting like this to somebody that I really do care about, that I can have this fruitful relationship with. And so the universe has given you a new beginning with them. You know, you're having these wonderful messages of passion, stability towards this person person and you want to lock it down marriage marriage a lot of eights a lot of nines i think that um you know aquarius you guys are definitely not only heading in the right direction but um Producing something that's going to be very stable in your lives. Air signs sometimes need grounding energy. <laughs> Aquarians, I also feel like a lot of times you aren't always open to other opinions until you've exhausted every single possibility. <laughs> Every single possibility, try to, you know, um, create the outcome however you see fit. But this year, I, this year, these next two and a half to three years, I really feel like the lesson is going to be like you can take a step back. You don't need to control everything. You don't need to do everything by yourself. That also reminds me of the Virgo reading and how fitting that at the bottom of the deck is the hermit card, which is the card for Virgo. So it could be dealing with them. You know, maybe you two are learning the lesson together, but that is your reading for January, 2018. Okay. Um, the announcements I had, so I'm offering a past life and life purpose readings for $20. Uh, as many of you know, that have gotten readings with me um, since I've not only started my channel, but since even before, um, I usually charge $50 an hour. I'm actually re-looking at my pricing um, structure for the new year. 
um, especially after I do. So the readings are going to be on sale until Friday, uh, January 12th, 11, 59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to get me your appointment request and your payment prior to that cutoff date. And then I will honor whatever you want that reading. They will be recorded um, and sent to you for you to have and um, look at whenever you choose to. And then Saturday, January 13th, I'm actually hosting my first public event. I will be in the DMV area. That's DC, Maryland, Virginia. So come out and see me. Um, it's going to be a tarot party. You can find the tickets under the Ivy Phoenix Tarot Party on Eventbrite, or you can go to my Facebook page, the Ivy Phoenix Guidance, and you can purchase your tickets right there. The event is pinned to the top. So so you won't have to search for it. Just go ahead and purchase. They are separated into session only tickets. They are um, going to be reading only tickets. And then there are session and reading package tickets. So um, go for what you choose. Um, yeah. And it breaks out, you know, how the event is going to go down. I really wanted to get out the history of tarot. I was called to do that. And then how to decipher between, you know, uh, tarot decks and oracle cards as well. I use them both. I do enjoy using oracle cards because I'm an intuitive reader. So I apply it as I, you know, get my my visions or um, hear certain things, feel certain things and apply it to, you know, your question or the situation. So um, even outside of these deals and announcements, if you want a private reading with me, all that information is down below. But again, happy new year, Aquarius. I'm excited to come into your season at the end of the month or towards the end of the month. But until February, mwah, be blessed. Take care.